Hi there Fabric Jugglers, it's Babs here from Fiery Phoenix and today we're going to be using some simple um, cord and some, some fabric scraps to create our own piping and I'm also going to show you how you can create the same effect using some ribbon. Um, if that's something that you think would be of interest to you in your sewing projects then please stick around and let's see how to do that. So to start off with, we've got the cord that we created in the earlier tutorial, how to create cording. Um, and what we need is a piece of fabric which will coordinate with your project, whatever that project piece may be, uh, whether that's piping for cushions or bags. Um, you know, there's many ways that we can use piping, and we're looking at roughly a two inch um a two inch piece of, of fabric or a two inch width of, width of fabric. I'm using straight of grain cut. If you are only going to be sewing in a straight line and you will be doing pivoted right angle corners, then you can use straight of grain for your piping. However, if you're going to be piping around any kinds of curves, you should be using a bias binding or, a, or fabric that's been cut at 45 degrees, not on the straight, but actually cut at the angle. Um, if you're unsure of how to do that, then I will post up a link to to um, to a bias binding tutorial. Um, so it's very very simple. The the actual process itself is you take the um, the cord, you lay it down the centre of the fabric, and then you fold the fabric around. Now the reason that we've left such a wide amount of fabric is once you've sewn the piping, you then need whoops you then need to have some fabric left to work with on your project. So this is a teeny tiny piece of cording, so it's actually quite small within, within the fabric that we've, we've allowed here. But what you would do is sew as close to this edge as is possible so that you are trapping the cord right to the edge of the piping, um, or right to the edge of the fabric, which is what creates that piping effect. So if you'll bear with me, I'll just switch out my, my foot because I use a zipper foot to create this effect. I don't use a standard foot. What I'm doing, I've set this up so that everything is on the right hand side. So I've got the piece of the cord sticking out the end so I can see exactly where I'm trying to sew. I'm going to sew as close to this edge as is humanly possible. And to do that, I'm using my zipper foot so that I'm nice and tight up to that edge. And I am also going to move my needle across to the right, again, to give me whatever I can get to get me as close as possible to the edge of that cording because I want that cording to be nice and tight. If you have a machine that will move the needle over to the left and you're more comfortable sewing with everything on the left, then by all means, you switch it around to the way that you are comfortable to work and you need to keep this, this cording tightly to the side and then we'll, we'll start sewing. I'm using a contrasting thread so that you can see what I'm doing. And you need to continue to fold the fabric so that it is in half and that, that cord is, is as tight to the edge as you can have it so that you're actually creating the piping as it comes out the back. You don't actually want to sew through the cording itself, you just want to sew along the edge next to it so that it's held in position. That's the end of my cord. as you can see that has given me a nice piece of, of piping. Um, I've obviously used contrasting um, thread so that you can see the stitches but I would strongly suggest that you use um, thread that will, will disappear into your, your project work and then you simply insert this piping into your seams um, when you're sewing up a piece of, of garment. So if you'll bear with me I will show you what that looks like. So what we do is we take our piece of piping and we put that along the edge of the um, of the fabric, and then we sandwich that between the next piece of fabric. 
and we then sew along the inner edge. I'll just run you a quick sample. What I've done uh, before my camera died, which I didn't spot, so I apologise for that, is to actually put in a basting stitch here. Um, so that this is, is holding together. So that what I can do is then use my zipper foot to get tight up to the edge of the piping. And this is where we go as tight as we possibly can to, to that piping to give it a really professional look. Make sure your needle is in the correct position. No good trying to sew with it in the uh, far left if you've moved the presser foot over to the right position to sew the, along the edge. And then off I go. See that it's actually up against the um, the uh, the piping, and this is the the final effect, which I think is um, is very very snazzy looking, especially with this particular fabric against the black. Um, so hopefully that um, that has been quite a helpful tutorial for you in how to both construct some some straighter grain piping and how to use it. And as I said before, if you are going to be working with curves of any sort, you don't want to be using straighter grain fabric for, for the outer casing. You really do need that 45 degree bias cut. And here we go um, with the bonus of how to use some ribbon. Again, this ribbon obviously is not bias, uh, bias cut, so this would be no good for, for curved areas, but I'll still show you how you would use it. It's the same as if you'd actually cut the fabric so you simply roll the or run the cord down the centre of a wide piece of ribbon and then fold it over and sew. Um, I'll quickly run this through the sewing machine for you. So you can see that it is just as simple a process, even though the fabric is slightly more shiny. Um, it is still just fabric and just cord. But uh, having the option to run it through with uh, ribbon may be something that you're looking for in a future project. Now again, I try to keep not quite as tight to the um, the cord as possible for the <coughs> for the uh, the initial sew of, of sewing the cording in, um, so that I've then got some leeway and I won't be seeing the stitches. This gives you a lovely shiny effect without having to uh, spend huge amounts of money and time cutting out all of the fabric. Just coming down to the end. There you can see that we have the piping created ready to use out of just a piece of ribbon um, so again a nice simple simple easy to use piece of piping um, only with a nice satin machine effect so um, as I say hopefully this has been of use and if so please give it a great big fat thumbs up and share it around with anybody else that you think may benefit from this tutorial um, as always, I'm, I'm more than happy for people to be sharing these tutorials. That's the reason I record them, is to, to spread my love of sewing to the world. Um, I, I believe that sewing is a skill which um, tragically is being lost. And so these are my little way of, of trying to, to help spread that knowledge back into uh, back into society. Oh, it sounds so, such a lofty goal. Um, but really, I love sewing and I hope that other people can get some joy out of that as well. So if, if, if these little tutorials are, are helping anybody in that respect, then um, then that's great. Um, that's that's excellent to know. I upload new tutorials on Tuesdays and on Thursdays. The simplest way to, to get those tutorials to drop into your feed is to subscribe. But if you don't want to push the subscribe button, there's no pressure to do so. Just remember to pop back if you think that these, these tutorials might help you again in the future. Hope to see you again. Bye for now.